we already know who occupies the highest constitutional post in India. It is the President of India. But do you know who has the second most highest constitutional office in India? It is the Vice President. The Vice President has the second highest constitutional post in India. The office of the Vice President, as you can understand, is therefore of a lot of dignity and prestige. Let us now understand what all qualifications one has to have to become a Vice Presidential candidate. First of all, one has to be a citizen of India. Because unless one is a citizen of India, he cannot understand the traditions, the culture, the thought process of the people of India. And therefore, he will be indifferent to what the demands of the people of India are. Therefore, to be a vice president, to be a representative of the country, you have to be a citizen of the country. Secondly, the vice presidential candidate should have completed the age of 35 or he should be at least 35 years of age. This is just the same as that of the president. The president and the vice president candidates both have to be at least 35 years. This has been done so that the people who are nominating themselves for a vice presidential candidate can have some maturity and that they are already in the political circle for some period of time. The third is that he must not have any criminal record. The vice president is the face of the nation. He represents the country in some way. So, such an important person obviously cannot be a criminal. So, anyone who is a criminal or has a criminal record in the past cannot be a vice presidential candidate. But the vice presidential candidate has to qualify for the eligibility to become a Rajya Sabha member. And just like it is said in the Rajya Sabha, if someone has been convicted of a crime and has been imprisoned for less than two years, then he will be given a second chance to contest. Then the vice presidential candidate must be a voter for any parliamentary constituency in India. So, he has to have his name in the electoral rolls of any constituency of the country. This will prove that he is a regular voter. As citizens of a democracy, our most important function is to elect our representatives who will run the government. So, if someone has their name in one of the parliamentary constituency as a voter, it will prove that the vice presidential candidate is a responsible citizen of the country. After that, one should not be of unsound mind. Now, we have already learned that the constitution does not clearly define the term unsound mind. But as we have already known, that it has something to do with mental instability or mental sickness. Someone who has been given such huge responsibilities has to be mentally stable and at peace to be able to carry out his functions. Therefore, the vice presidential candidate has to be one of sound mind. Then the vice presidential candidate should be able to meet his financial needs. So he has to be aware of his financial debts and has to clear off all dues so that we can understand that the person is responsible who can carry out his duties responsibly as well as is financially stable. Other than this, the vice presidential candidate should not hold an office of profit under the government of India or the government of any state. An office of profit is a position that brings to the person some form of financial gain or benefit or some advantage. So, a person who is being elected as the vice president cannot hold an office of profit. This is done to ensure that the vice president cannot be influenced by his other position or his office of profit. Also, the vice president might be given some confidential information. And this is also done to ensure that that confidential information doesn't get out. 
but as we've already learned while we were talking about the qualifications for becoming the president that a person is not deemed to hold an office of profit in case he is the president or the vice president or the governor or a minister either for the union or for any state. What does this mean? This means that the present vice president can re-elect himself. He can stand for elections again and if he is elected as the next vice president, he can serve his term again. Similarly, for the president, the governor or any minister, they can also stand for elections. And if they are elected, they have to leave their previous positions before entering into the new office of the vice president. Again, if a member of either house of the parliament or of the house of legislature of any state is elected as the vice president, he shall be deemed to vacate his seat in the house on the date on which he enters upon his office as the vice president. This is exactly what we said before that if a person from any other position who holds an office already becomes elected as the vice president, then they will have to leave their earlier office on the day they enter into their new office. Now, even if you have fulfilled all of these eligibility criteria, you will still not be eligible as a vice presidential candidate. Why? Because you will have to be nominated by certain people. Just like the president needs 50 proposers and 50 seconders, the vice presidential candidate needs to be proposed by 20 members of the electoral college and seconded by another 20 members. This is done to ensure that the candidate is a serious candidate and that he has the support of a lot of people. So his friends and his colleagues have to support him so as to be nominated as the vice presidential candidate. He needs 20 proposers who will propose his name as the vice presidential candidate and 20 seconders who will agree with the proposers and the proposed candidate. Now can you answer this question? A vice presidential candidate needs to be proposed by how many members? Is it 50 members, 40 members, 30 members or 20 members? You are right. He needs 20 members as his proposers. Now that we've already talked about what the eligibility criteria are, let us talk about how the vice president is elected. The vice presidential election is similar to that of the president. Why? Because the vice president is also elected in accordance to the system of proportional representation by means of a single transferable vote. To know more about how the president and the vice president is elected through this method, you can refer to the link on the iDictionary feature. Now the electoral college of the presidential election consists of the elected members of both the houses of parliament and the state legislatures. But the composition of the electoral college, that is the group of people who elect the vice president, is different than that of the presidential election. So the electoral college for the election of the vice president does not consist of MLAs or members of the legislative assemblies of the states. It only consists of the members of parliament. It consists of all the members of parliament. So all the members of Lok Sabha and all the members of Rajya Sabha. All the members of the Lok Sabha are elected members. But in the Rajya Sabha, there are 12 nominated members as well. So unlike the presidential electoral college, in the vice presidential electoral college, these nominated members are also included. So as we can understand, the vice presidential electoral college consists of all the members of the parliament. Now let us talk about the tenure of the vice president. The vice president is elected for a term of five years. So just as the president has a five year term, the vice president also has a five year term. Now there is the convention 
that is an unwritten law that the vice president can be re-elected any number of times. After the vice president is elected, he has to take an oath before he enters into office as the vice president. The president administers the oath of office and secrecy to the vice president. In the oath of the vice president, the vice president promises to follow and respect the constitution, to carry out his duties responsibly and to serve the people of the country. Now let us see a video where the 13th vice president, Venkaya Naidu, is taking his oath of office while being administered by the 14th president of India, Ramnath Kovind. I, I, Yam Venkaya Naidu, Ishwar ki sapat leta hoon ki, Ishwar ki sapat leta hoon ki, I, Vidhi Dwara isthapit, I, Vidhi Dwara isthapit, Bharat ke samvidhan ke prati, भारत के संविधान के प्रति सच्ची श्रद्धा और निष्ठा रखूंगा सच्ची श्रद्धा और निष्ठा रखूंगा आफ्टर द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट हैज बीन इलेक्टेड नाउ लेट अस कम टू द पावर्स ऑफ द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट व्हाट फंक्शंस डज द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट हैव सो द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट इज द एक्स ऑफिशियो चेयरमैन ऑफ द राज्यसभा as we've already learnt about this when we talked about the parliament of India, the vice president by virtue of being the vice president becomes the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. So the person who is the chairman of the Rajya Sabha is the same person as the vice president of India. Like the speaker of the Lok Sabha, the chairman of the Rajya Sabha that is the vice president is the presiding officer of the Rajya Sabha. So like the speaker of the Lok Sabha, the chairman of the Rajya Sabha has a lot of functions. Like he has to call the meetings of the house, he has to give permission to the people to speak, he has to check the admissibility of questions and facts that come up in the Rajya Sabha and he has the power to suspend or adjourn the meetings of the Rajya Sabha in case there is death of a member or there is lack of quorum or if the parliament house is becoming very chaotic or unruly. Now, the vice president is not a member of the Rajya Sabha. Unlike the speaker of the Lok Sabha, who is a member of the Lok Sabha, the vice president, who is the chairman of the Rajya Sabha, is not a member of the Rajya Sabha. So, he does not have voting rights. That is, he is entitled to vote only when there is a tie, which is called the casting vote. So in normal circumstances, the chairman of the Rajya Sabha cannot vote, but he can vote only if there is a tie. The second power of the vice president is that in the absence of the president, the vice president discharges his duties. But this is a temporary thing. So, in case of death of the president or resignation of the president or removal of the president, the vice president can become the acting president. So, the vice president acts as the president until a new president is elected and enters office. So, the vice president does not automatically become the president. He has to act as the president for some time before the new president is elected and the new president enters his office. In this circumstance, when the president dies, resigns or is removed and the vice president takes over as the president, he can continue serving as the president for a maximum of six months within which a new president shall be elected. So the maximum time the vice president can act as the president in his absence is six months. For being the chairman of the Rajya Sabha, the vice president is given a handsome salary and he is also endowed with several benefits like free medical expenses, free travel expenses and he is also eligible for a pension. That is to ensure that he has a comfortable and financially stable retired life. 
also when the vice president is acting as the president of the country then he is eligible for the same salary as that of the president and the same privileges as that of the president now that we've talked about how the vice president is elected there is also a provision for the removal of the vice president but the vice president is not removed in the same procedure as that of the president there is no formal provision for impeachment of the vice president let us talk about how the vice president can be removed the resolution for the removal of the vice president can be initiated only in the rajya sabha after the resolution has been initiated in the rajya sabha it has to be passed by an effective majority now what is an effective majority effective majority is the majority of more than 50% of the effective strength of the house so the total strength of rajya sabha the majority of that has to pass the resolution after it has been passed by this effective majority it comes to the lok sabha and in the lok sabha it has to be agreed with a simple majority a simple majority means a majority of more than 50% of the members present and voting in the house so this is how the vice president can be removed from his office he can also resign willingly by writing his resignation to the president of the country so in this video we've talked about everything related to the vice president of india we've talked about how he's elected and how he may be removed we've also talked about his tenure his qualifications as well as his nature of office which make him such an important representative of the country don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now